So maybe now it is uh, uh, four o'clock in Bangkok, five o'clock in Singapore, uh, in Manila. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, uh, many other places. <laughs> but uh, it should be uh, now uh, around uh, 10 o'clock in Paris, <laughs> very, very early. And also uh, in other countries, uh, like in Washington, D.C., now maybe five o'clock uh, in the evening. <laughs> That may be too early uh, for them to come, but uh, I think this should be good for our people from uh, Asia. That's why we make it this time. Uh, if we make it uh, in, uh, say, at around um, eight o'clock in the evening, it may be troublesome for uh, many people here, say, in the Philippines, maybe uh, nine o'clock in the evening. Uh, in New Zealand, maybe uh, uh, maybe two o'clock or something in the morning uh, so i make it this uh, time and uh, in normally i sleep at around uh, 9 30 or 9 o'clock in the evening <laughs> that's why maybe i may be too sleepy uh, experts uh, as you may know uh, the council of experts uh, is one of the council of uh, pfc we have council of developers council of experts council of valuers uh, council of uh, property managers and council of uh, uh, brokers and we also have council of architects, council of engineer, and uh, uh, prop tech something. So there are so many council, and the council of uh, uh, expert uh, is uh, headed by me. I'm the president of this uh, council. So we have uh, webinar uh, really uh, often. Uh, this time will be about the property consultant. Uh, next time will be something else. So we will run this uh, every month, hopefully. Uh, next month, it may be something about how to run a shopping center. That may be very interesting <laughs> as well, how to run a shopping center. Uh, we hope to get the uh, uh, speakers from Chiputa, the uh, big group of shopping centers and housing developers in the Philippines, headed by the uh, president of uh, VFC International, Mr. Chiputa. Uh, but uh, he did not speak himself uh, he will, the, the one who will be speaking will be the one who will real ex exactly run the shopping center. So this session should be also very interesting. We will announce the dates very soon. Okay. Uh, but this uh, session will be uh, something about the uh, know-how for uh, property consultants. And we will discuss, uh, discuss something about a major uh, uh, know-how, uh, major core know-how for our consultants. Uh, property consultants, maybe uh, brokers, uh, sales agents, uh, appraisers, uh, property managers, and any uh, group of uh, consultants in uh, real estate. And then another thing is about the steps and strategies uh, to develop, to be a successful uh, uh, property consultant, how to uh, may, maybe how to develop themselves. And that can be for agents or developers for I'm sorry for uh, property managers for valuers and the last one uh, uh, last question will be something about uh, what are really uh, need for knowledge update know how update update how to update uh, regularly for our uh, know how uh, on their estate or something so these are three major points and uh, we have uh, our uh, three uh, uh, to major speakers uh, to big brother in real estate in Asia. The first one is uh, uh, President Harry Yeo, uh, the one uh, that we can see. Uh, President Harry Yeo, I met him in uh, 2016 in Bangkok. He came to our first uh, arena in Bangkok. He is really generous, really kind, and really great uh, teacher and mentor. Uh, I uh, uh, respect love him a lot. Uh, so he is uh, one of our great uh, educator in this region. And uh, the second one uh, is uh, uh, Professor Dr. Edgar Chi uh, Ong. Uh, Dr. Edgar Chi Ong he is uh, the pillar of real estate knowledge in the Philippines. You know, like a pillar uh, and beam and column or something. That is a pillar uh, of real estate knowledge uh, in uh, uh, the Philippines. Uh, uh, but for me, I'm uh, like something like the uh, uh, tooth stick, <laughs> tooth stick, 
ประเทศพิราบนี่จะ really great in uh, uh, providing knowledge for his students I, I hope I heard that uh, he may have uh, over uh, 10 of thousand uh, students in the Philippines and other places as well so he is a great man so I invite these two uh, gentlemen uh, to chair Uh, also, I will share a little bit as well on uh, these matters. So uh, uh, we may just uh, uh, start, and then uh, the first one allow me, the uh, Professor Doctor Ong. I will uh, yes. let uh, Mr. Professor uh, Doctor uh, President uh, Harry Yeo to speak first because he he pair uh, some PowerPoint uh, to uh, present. So uh, uh, you may present first, uh, uh, President. Uh, Ali, yo. Uh, All right. Ten minutes or something for your slides, please <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Doctor Sopon. So I will now upload the slides and do some short presentation. And yes. after the presentation, if there's any questions, I will address it later. Okay. Uh? Okay. Let yes. me upload the slides first. Okay. What core know-how successful property consultants consultants need to have? You know, I've been in the property line for more than 25 years. So I've done commercial, industrial, and residential. So I also have a team of agents in my group. Is it? Now, having been in this line for so many years, I realized that there are certain skills that successful property consultants will have. You can be a successful broker, successful real estate salesperson, but the qualities that are required are the same. So let us look at some of the know-how and we will proceed further from there. Let me see if there's any question there. All right. All right, so it's okay. Now let us start. Real estate consultants, you and I, we the practitioners, are not just intermediaries, not just middlemen, but we are experts. We are advisors. We give advice to our clients and we need a wide range of skill sets so that we can help our client to go through the buying, selling, and renting process easily. <clears throat> so let us now go to the core know-how that you and I must have because these are the basic know-how that we should have. Number one, you and I, we the property consultants must have deep understanding of the market where we serve. As for me, I am in Singapore so I know the Singapore market very well, right? so that I can help my client to make the right decision. Knowing the market, I know what are the values of the various properties in Singapore. The highest price, the lowest price, the median price. I know the market trends and the zoning. And more importantly also, I know the regulatory controls so that I can help my client to sail through their sale and purchase and leasing activities without problems. Yeah? So being a property consultant, I will help them to analyze the market, the trends, the property values. And I also have a lot of database. So you and I, the core know-how, number one, very basic you must be a subject matter expert in your own area of practice. Number two, as property agents, I negotiate for my client. As a real estate consultant, we do negotiate. So a real estate consultant should possess effective ne negotiation skills. We have to negotiate the best deals for our clients. So if I should represent the seller, I will make sure to the best of my ability that we get the highest price. If I represent the buyer, 
I will use my skills to get the lowest price so that my client will get the maximum value. So you, to negotiate, we have to understand the needs and the motivations of our client. And our clients can be sellers, can be buyers, can be landlords or tenants. Whoever is a client, we have to work from their angle, negotiate for them and get the best price. In the process of negotiation, we do encounter obstacles. So we shall use our skills to narrow the differences and come to a good conclusion. So we assist our clients in negotiating prices, terms and other conditions. So that is our second core skill. Be a subject matter expert. We must have negotiation skills to negotiate the best price so that there is a win-win solution. My client wins, the other side also wins. Effective sales negotiations is a very important skill for real estate consultants. And we also, as real estate consultants, must have client relationship management skills. You must manage your client on the basis of trust and transparency. If I trust you, I will deal with you. If there is no trust, then there's no basis of any relationship. So we meet our clients, we are sincere, we are transparent, we understand their needs and help them reach their goals. So we provide personalized guidance and tailored solutions. This is our job to assist the client to get the best decision from their limited budget. As property consultants, we must also know something about financial analysis. My client will ask me, Mr. Yo, if I should invest a million dollars on this property, what is my yield? What is my net return? So there are other more complex calculations. We do cash flow projections. We use the payback period, the net present value method, and the internal rate of return method to get the right answer for them. Besides financial skills, one of the most important skills is to sell the product. Remember, nothing happens until a sale takes place. We are supposed to help the vendor get the sales done. So as real estate consultants, we must effectively market the properties to the right buyers at the shortest time at the highest price. So we have to use various marketing channels. I have, uh, besides advertisements in the newspapers and in the portal. We also do telemarketing, door knocking, video marketing, social video. So there are many approaches. Whatever approaches or combination of approaches we use, the end result is to make sure that we achieve the objective. And if I should represent a seller, the objective is to sell at the shortest time and highest price. So I have to reach out to various buyers. Now, in the process of representing the sellers, the buyers, landlords and tenants, we must have thorough legal understanding of the environment that we are operating. So as for us, we know the laws relating to the transactions, the regulations and the contracts involved because we have standard sale and purchase agreement. The terms and conditions therein are fully conversant. I understand well so that I can help my clients. We must also be fully conversant, knowledgeable about the other documents that we have. We must know the rules and regulatory controls of your country so that when we do the transaction, we do not break the laws. So we, the agents, the real estate consultants must know the rules, the regulations and other requirements so that we can help our clients to navigate the transaction seamlessly and smoothly. Well, 
I have done so many deals and not all deals go smoothly. There are problems involved. So as real estate consultants, you and I, we are problem solvers. If there's no problem, they don't need us. So there will be problems that need to be ironed out. And because we have to solve them, help them solve the problems, you see. We got to identify the issues and then give them solutions. I can tell you that we have done so many rental of property deals, you know, upon handover. And then when we take back, there are problems that need to be issued, to be ironed out then. Hey, Mr. Tenon, look at the flaws. Look at the scratches. These are willful damage. You have to pay for compensation. No, these are natural wear and tear. No, this is willful damage. You can see that there are different interpretation on the same matter. So we, the property agents, being the middle party, will have to use our skill to iron out the matter. All right, so that is part of our job. We are problem solvers, not only in rental cases, also in sales cases, because there is a gap between the selling price and the buying price. But besides the selling and buying price, there are other terms and conditions attached to the sale and pro of property. So we must make sure that we are able to meet the terms and conditions demanded by the vendor and also demanded by the buyers. You know, I have uh, agents who also do a lot of deals, but in the process, they are not careful and therefore they end up in trouble. This is a freehold property. After the client has bought the property, hey, this is a leasehold property. How come you say it's freehold? the real estate consultant has failed to do due diligence. The least we could do before we take up the assignment is to do a property search at the land registry to make sure that the facts we give are actual facts. Do not base on hearsay information just from the vendor because you may put out the wrong information. This is at 100 square meters in size, it turned out to be 95. Hey, consultant, how come you gave me wrong information? You see, we must pay attention to details on the representations that we make. Make sure that it's 100% accurate. And where do you get information? Go back to the source. Do the searches at the various registries to make sure that you do not misrepresent the facts. Otherwise, you could be sued for misrepresent misrepresentation. So instead of closing the deal successfully, we get into trouble. So we, if we want to be successful, and belong in the trade. We have to pay attention to details. Do not be slip short. Consultants must pay close attention to details and transactions to ensure that the information and the figures that you write in a contract, make sure that the figures are actually correct. Otherwise, there'll be dispute in terms of money matter. We the agents like myself, I've been in the trade for so many years. In the past, we rely less on technology and more on the traditional methods of subscribe to it. Yes, sir. All right. So we do not rely in the past. We relied on traditional method, but today if you just rely on traditional method, you are outdated. You will lose in the market trade. We have to keep up to date and use technology, leverage on technology if we want to go far. Real estate consultants should be proficient in using software. Hey, where's the year? I'm here. I've been doing for the last 20 years. I do not use software. I can still go on. I agree, sure, but you'll be left behind because those who leverage on software reach further 
and faster and deeper into the market. You will lose out. If you do not change, you will lose out. You have two alternatives. Change or die. So if you do not want to die from the trade, you have to change. You have to adopt technology. That is one of the core skills that you must acquire must not be resistant to change real estate consultants should be proficient in using real estate software we have our own proprietary software do online listing you know and not only newspaper listing do virtual tours digital marketing etc etc i uh, mr yo this just too much for me to learn the question I ask is this, do you want to be long in this trade? If you desire to be long in the trade, you must adjust, you must adopt, you must adapt, otherwise you'll be left behind. Change or die, the, the choice is yours. Evolve or dissolve, the choice is yours. Now, there, is, there are so many things that are coming on, on stream. We have to learn all the time. In our country, in Singapore, we have continuous professional development. We have to update and upgrade our knowledge. Otherwise, if we do not meet the minimum requirement, our license will not be renewed. And in Singapore, if one's license is not renewed, it is illegal. We can't practice as real estate consultants. If we do, we may end up in fine or imprisonment or both. So we must update and upgrade and attend lessons all the time. And we not only acquire hard skills, we must also acquire soft skills because we are dealing with people and people have feelings. So we must be able to adapt learning and continuous learning is that you cannot stop learning. Once you stop learning, you'll be left behind because things are moving fast. A successful consultant should be committed to continuous learning so that you are updated and upgraded and do not resist to learn new technology. As real asset consultants, we cannot do things alone we need a team so you must create your contact with other brokers with investors with bankers with lawyers and with valuers we need to network so that we got a pool of knowledge because of our networking skills we can have access to various specialized knowledge nobody knows everything we need to rely on others and work as a team therefore to survive you must have people skills and networking skills strong Mr. Mr. Networking Mr. Skills. no no hurry no hurry one more minute sir, please huh one, one, one more minute, minute please oh, all right so, so I, I will hurry up i, I said no I, all right okay okay now real estate agents must have emotional intelligence you must be able to understand your customers feelings stand in their shoes be empathetic see things from their point of view and wow i got so many agents and i got so many things to do if you want to succeed you must be skillful in time management and we must adapt if you do not change you will die adapt and adopt and in the process of meeting with landlords and tenants because there are differences we the real estate consultants must be good and skillful in resolving conflicts and more than that as a real estate consultant who wants to be long in a trade we must be honest we must be transparent in our dealings and then creative technology i just show you that we must go beyond the normal one actually i want to show you a sample i do virtual marketing and let me give a sample a short sample this is virtual marketing 
ഹലോ All right, I end and uh, no, I shall end the video here because okay. there's not enough time. But well, two more items. we must be good in conflict management skills so that we identify the conflicts before they arise and one more item we you know in the process of doing real estate there are unexpected problems so we <laughs> must be good in crisis management and finally we must be good in keeping up with technology as for me in my real estate work i use chat gpt and i would urge you to use AI to enhance your productivity. So thank you so much. Back to you, Doctor Sopan. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, sorry that I uh, <laughs> had to stop earlier, but uh, no, I should uh, allow you to solo for maybe three hours. That should be should be enough. But sorry, very interesting. Okay. Yes, and uh, right now uh, our friend from uh, New Zealand said that it is now around uh, nine twenty-five now. Uh, at in at night 9:25 and you can see uh, uh, president harry yo uh, he uh, is really powerful in presentation <laughs> yeah, and also uh, we really good care for the clients so this is a really good prototype and he also say something about the uh, cpd that is really interesting so how many well, six hours per six hour per year right for the cpd yes six, six hours, yeah. hours yes i see yeah and uh, So we will discuss this later uh, about the uh, the sale or something. So allow me to uh, uh, invite uh, Professor Ong, uh, Professor Edgar T. Ong, to say something about this, uh, and maybe you can uh, uh, solo for say some five or ten minutes or something. Uh, Doctor Ong, Professor Ong, are you here? Yes, yes, yes. I'm here. I'm here. Yes, Did you hear me? Yes, yes. I, I see you. Uh, oh, you have some presentation as well. Very yes, good. Yes, a little yes. bit, a little bit. For about two minutes. <laughs> I uh, I subscribe. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, hello, Harry. Hi. <laughs> subscribe to what? Uh, Hi, sir. Harry has uh, just mentioned that is really the traits, the qualities of a successful real estate consultant. And uh, most importantly, today, in the in the modern times, we cannot help but look into what technology. Technology has advanced so much that we cannot help. Like uh, Harry mentioned about AI, yes, we are also using that in the Philippines, and we are almost every step of the way. What Harry has has mentioned. We are doing it in the Philippines, but let me just give you a brief background on how to be a real estate consultant in the Philippines. You know that we have a law in the Philippines called the R the Public Act 9646, signed by the President of the Republic of the Philippines on June 29. nine is called the Real Estate Service Act of the Philippines and it is spells among other things the division of the work and areas of concern of the different uh, quali- classifications or discipline in the real estate world in the Philippines first we have the first person and then we have the real estate broker and then we have the real estate appraiser and would you believe it we include in our law the government 
assessor, real estate assessor. So for much more connectivity, we include in the law. But most importantly, the APEC, the highest level in our profession is called real estate consultant. It's not so easy to be a consultant. You have to be a real estate broker for 10 years before you can be qualified to take the licensure examination for real estate consultancy and five years as a real estate appraiser before you can be uh, allowed to take the licensure exams for real estate consultancy. So in the Philippines, we made it a little bit uh, steeper or harder to become a real estate consultant because we believe that real estate consultant does all. In other words, it is the one that gives guidelines and uh, and a lot of uh, nitty gritty regarding the transaction, including government regulatory rules and so on and so forth. That's why in the Philippines, we make it quite a little bit stricter before you can be a real estate consultant. But uh, to be as defined, you know, in our law, a real estate consultant is a natural person, a juridical person, who for and in expectation of a fee, compensation, or other valuable consideration, offers or renders professional advice on a number one, the uh, acquisition, preservation, utilization, or disposition of lands or improvements thereon on value or, or valuable rights existing or to be created thereon. And number two, the conception, planning, and development of realty projects and which may or may otherwise be encumbered units like subdivision lots, condominium units, market stalls, memorial parks, and the like. So in other words, real estate consultants are experts, just like what uh, Harry is saying, they are experts of almost every aspect of real estate. They help the buyers and sellers make smarter real estate decisions. So we assist in the decision-making as consultant to the various stakeholders in real estate and also helps with financial analysis. I remember Ari was telling that about for a specific property or strategic planning when aiming to build your portfolio. Therefore, consultant's role in a transaction is primarily focused on wealth management. They primarily focus on engaging with real estate developers rather than residential buyers and sellers. Hiring a consultant, for example, can be an excellent approach for someone who aspires to be a real estate tycoon. As a matter of fact, you know, one particular thing that is common to all the top 10 billionaires in the country, in the Philippines today, is that they are all engaged in real estate state. Example, the biggest mall, SM, Q-Mark, they have the SMDC, develop, SM Development Corporation that develops a lot of condominiums all over the country. And, you know, when you move to hire a consultant, it can be an excellent approach for someone if you want to be really perform well or deliver well in the in the real estate industry, then you have to hire a real estate consultant, especially in the real estate investment plan. And the consultant will help you set goals for developing a profitable real estate industry. Okay, how do you become a consultant in the Philippines? Today, it's quite a little bit harder because you have to earn a degree. You have to have 
a degree from the Commission on Higher Education called the Bachelor's Degree in Real Estate Management. Dab a CMO number 28, series of 2011. And now, today, uh, nobody now is allowed to take the licensure exam for all areas of air appraisal consultant. If you are not, if you have not submitted to the satisfaction of the Professional Regulation Commission Board of Real Estate Service, a degree in real estate management. Okay. Then, if you want to be a consultant in the Philippines, you have to earn work experience, which will educate you how to be a more efficient, responsible, and dependable real estate broker, appraiser, and consultant. As the real estate professionals, you must also constantly hone your talent, develop yourself, and as mandated by law, applicant for a real estate consultant license must meet the requirements. At least 21 years old. Uh, no, you are not convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude. And a real estate consultant for 10 years or a five years real estate appraiser. So therefore, it is important that you have to take the licensure examination okay okay so these are some documentation but i don't think it is needed okay but one most importantly is you have to pass the licensure examination Next week, next Sunday, we will have another examination for real estate brokers. And I think there are about two, three thousand who are going to get to take the licensure exam. Okay. So to, to reiterate, property consultants are hired, are hired to guide commercial and real estate development projects from inception to Completion or to finish, they say from womb to tomb. <laughs> this could include completing feasibility studies, competitive analysis, and researching viable development sites. So, therefore, I should tell you that the practices of consultancy in the Philippines is quite a little bit more steeper or harder in terms of qualification to become a real estate consultant. We have a ladderized form of, uh, of structure. That is, you become first a salesman. Then after that, you become a broker. But you know, salesman, you don't take the exam. You just attend seminars of 12 hours. But uh, broker, you take the exam. Appraiser, you take the exam. And uh, consultancy, you also take the licensure examination. So let me tell you that uh, if you are a real estate consultant, there are various skills that you have to possess. And that is intellectual ability and experience. As I have elucidated before, it is important that you know uh, the things that, of course, Harry has mentioned, you know, the 10 points. But uh, again, what is most important that I would try to add on is before you accept a consultancy agreement, you should conduct the what we call dilemma analysis. In other words, you should have a dilemma analysis ability because people, developers, will not hire you if you if they if they see no obstacles or problems along the line, so that you may be able to help. And again, sensing and perception to analyze facts and environmental constraints and other positive influences must be done. In other words. 
due diligence, as I think mentioned by Harry, due diligence is important. Before you accept a consultancy agreement, try to check whether the project is feasible. If not, then it is most important that you say gracefully, I, I will not be able to take it because of some considerations or constraints. But most importantly, and I think Harry will agree with me, that integrity is very essential. Manipulation of data is a no-no. It is not a professional act of a licensed consultant. And what's most important thing to do is timing and interpersonal skills. Timing, you should know when to plan, when to implement, when to do things always at the same time, because when you try to do, when you have a very nice timing, you can be assured that you get the right result. But most importantly, Harry has mentioned about interpersonal skills. You must have a very good communication ability that you can connect and persuade and motivate people to, to, to work with you so that, because when you're a consultant, you don't do it yourself. You need an engineer, you need an architect, you need an environmental planner, you need accountant, you need advisors too. All in all, you are the real estate consultant, you're trying to sum it all. But most importantly is yourself, personal drive. You have to be, uh, you know, driven to be able to accomplish things. And importantly, your ethics, integrity, and your physical and mental health. It is important no? in, in, in consultancy. But uh, let me give you a brief. Do I still have time for about two more, two, three minutes? Yeah, okay. Uh, one and a half minutes, sir. Okay. <laughs> two minutes, two minutes. <laughs> okay. Let me watch my watch. give you the process because Harry have elucidated the qualities and all the things that you should know, you should you to expect for you to become a successful real estate consultant. But now, other than what I have mentioned, let me give you the consulting process. First, entry. You accept the consultancy agreement, but before you do that, you have to do problem diagnosis. You have to know the scope of work that are needed by the developers or the or the person who hired you. And then you can prepare a proposal to the clients. And then you then they if agreeable, you sign a consulting, a real estate consulting contract. This is what some people, some consultants neglect. You have to document things. You want to engage me as a consultant? Let me see what you want to have, what do you want to accomplish? And if I can do it, we sign a contract. And then you do diagnosis, conceptual framework, and facts, gathering of facts, analysis, and then you have to feedback, feedback to clients whether that is feasible. And then you do action planning, then generate alternatives, and then you go into the action proposal to client, what the client must do. And then as a real estate consultant, you also have to help your client, the developer, and the one who hired you in the implementation of your proposal. It will have to pass through rigidly to the board for approval. And once approved, you have to implement. And then after that, if it is, if the fruition or the accomplishment has been done, then that is already the end, the contract, the consultancy contract is terminated, withdrawn, and there is an evaluation or follow-up, and a consultant must do a final reporting to the client, so to speak, to end the consulting agreement. Okay, the first of all, that's it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You are very knowledgeable indeed. <laughs> and you make uh, our consultant uh, to be a superman <laughs> because uh, uh, they should be really much uh, versatile or something so that they can uh, perform their job. Uh, so uh, then we will have a Q 
Q&A. But before we have a Q&A, uh, allow me to just uh, adding a little bit, uh, maybe some uh, similar things as uh, a director of the Thai Real Estate Business School. I'm the president of the uh, PFC World Council of Experts. Uh, at the same time, also the president of uh, the director of the Thai Real Estate Business School. Uh, actually, we teach around uh, 20 subjects for students. But uh, so far as we know, if we want to materialize our real estate projects or want to sell it successfully, we have to uh, consider the feasibility study. We have to do the feasibility right. study. That is the uh, physical aspect, the legal aspect, as uh, uh, Professor Yeo and Dr. Uh, Watt also already said, and also uh, the uh, legal aspect and also financial and marketing. There are these four aspects that we have to uh, consider in mind. So there are so many things that we have to learn. But uh, to narrow it, uh, so far as I uh, asked from those who survived from the real estate crisis, back in 1997, uh, we conduct a very thorough survey for uh, developers at that time, how can they survive? And uh, for those uh, professionals, how can they survive uh, from the crisis in 1997, we found that uh, uh, for consultants like us, or for developers, for brokers, for appraisers like us, like me, uh, we need main, mainly two things. The first thing is finance, uh, as also mentioned by two of you, that is, if we know a lot about finance, we can do proper planning. Uh, we can do proper planning, otherwise we don't know how to plan. And we also need to know marketing. Uh, I will try to separate sales and marketing. So this is purely something about uh, marketing. That is, how can we forecast the market? If we, do not how, if we don't know how to forecast the market, what will be happening in the future, the trend or something uh, that will be uh, really dangerous? Definitely, we need to know the uh, skills of uh, sales that is uh, uh, really much important. But uh, if we don't know marketing, it will be very uh, uh, bad situation as well. Say in the case of finance, as I as mentioned by uh, President Yao and also uh, Dr. Ong, is that we need to know uh, and also present to our clients the return on investment, uh, like how much we can uh, earn uh, from the uh, rent every year, and is this. Uh, uh, preferable or not, and this is above the inflation or not. This is a net in uh, return, uh, not the cross in return, like we have uh, across uh, GDP and the net GDP. This thing is about the net GDP, and also the return of investment, like the capital gain, how much uh, we can earn. Uh, is this uh, preferable or favorable or not? Say, for example, gold. I believe that. Uh, uh, Professor Ong may have a lot of gold in his house. I will have to go to see <laughs> Professor and Dr. Ong. Say, uh, we, may, we all know that gold during the past uh, 65 years, 65 years, it increased around 100 times. 100 times. So, uh, if in terms of investment, we have to tell our clients uh, in uh, 65 years, 100 times, uh, how much increase every year? how much increase every year. Uh, that is something that we have to uh, uh, consider. Say, when it is time, it is uh, uh, something that increase for around 7.3% per annum. Every year increase 7.3% and it will become 100 times uh, for the next uh, 65 years. So this is something that we have to calculate so that our uh, clients will have confidence to invest, to buy properties or confident to sell it or something. So, this is something that we have to uh, keep in mind. Or in terms of repayment, like in uh, for our clients who want to borrow money, how much they should repay. And definitely we should know that uh, during the first few months, or particularly during the first few years, the repayment that we pay every time, uh, every month, mostly will be interest. Uh, the equity may be uh, in a small proportion, but in long run, it should be good. And how to calculate in the steps so that we can pay, repay back for the step. When we want to lease the properties for our clients, uh, how much we can we can calculate for this. So this is something that uh, the skill that we 
uh, should have or uh, our value uh, like in the case of the value of the house or value of uh, 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 President Yo. President Yo, so far as I know, you may earn at least uh, 10 million uh, Singapore dollar per year. So sorry if I wrong, if I'm wrong, maybe 20 dollar. Uh, if maybe 20 million dollar. Say if one million dollar, okay, suppose one million dollar per per annum. Now we have to calculate for our uh, uh may not be uh, uh president year, maybe a house uh, one million dollar or something. Say one million dollar, uh, we have to see that what is the uh safe rate that we expect, maybe around three, four percent for our uh safe rate, and also the inflation, another uh, three percent, so altogether six percent already. We also have risk to consider, maybe another two percent, so it becomes six or eight, uh, eight already. And then we also know that uh, the income that earned every year will be increasing because we have more skill. If it is uh, president year, or if, if in the case of the house, we may uh, increase net rent or something, maybe uh, say two percent per annum. So this eight percent should be minus another two percent or something. And for professional year, we can say that uh, the president year will say that uh, you may still be able to earn uh, this money for at least another 40 years from now. Okay, so from this 40 years, you can earn like this uh, for uh, 1 million uh, Singapore dollar and have a net increase of 2% or something. So this is the capitalization rate that we have to consider and then we will be able to calculate the value of uh, president year or the value of the house or something so that our client will feel more confident so this is something that we have to consider uh, apart from other uh, things that we have to consider another thing for the core knowledge for our uh, consultants that is as i said the marketing say uh, if we want to develop something we have to be able to forecast the sale completion say if we know that uh, month number one we can sell say 10 percent uh, month number two maybe we can sell another uh, seven percent uh, month number three we can sell another six percent so we when we add up it become 10 plus seven plus six so become 10 17 and 23 so uh, this is a trend that we can see so we can manipulate this and then we can see that uh, because of this rate uh, how much uh, how long we will be able to complete the sale or something but maybe we also have to try to do some promotion for the time being as well. So this is something that we have to consider when we uh, want to calculate this for, or estimate or forecast this for our clients uh, so that they have more uh, confidence. And also the recovery right now in many countries like in Vietnam, maybe uh, it is in a bus period. So we have to calculate how will be uh, the recovery period. We all know that we start from recovery and then boom and then then recession and then uh, in the bust period that is a uh, really depression or something and then uh, 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 gradually recovery recovery again so this is something that we have to uh, try to forecast and it is not so uh, difficult to forecast uh, so these are some skills that we make ourselves more knowledgeable make ourselves more confident to our clients so uh, for me, I just emphasize on these two skills, but other skills are also really, really important. So this is some uh, contribution for me. From, from now on, now it is around 6.45, 6.54 already. So maybe we are welcome for any Q&A or any comments or any contribution uh, from our uh, colleagues uh, uh, in this uh, Zoom. Uh, anyone would like to say something? Uh, we have a colleague from... Uh, New Zealand, we have from the USA and some authors. Uh, any uh, comments? Uh, or Mr. Clayton or uh, uh, Mr. Pontep or someone else? Uh, are there any uh, contributions? Hello, Paul. Hello, Paul. Yes. Paul, are you there? Uh, Dr. Subon, well, may, may, yes, may, may I amplify? May I try to put a point? on uh, okay. some of the issues as a consultant. As yes, a real but... estate consultant, do you accept all projects? That is a question. If a project comes to you, Harry, you know that. 
you do you accept all? No. Because you might eventually jeopardize your own reputation. <laughs> so what do you do? You have to conduct first due diligence whether the con the, the project would be feasible or not. And that is the time that you will try to accept and go into the entry point, as I've said, the steps, and signing a contract. You know, in my in the Philippines, I uh, do not accept a consultancy project if I can see that the property that they are referring to has a lot of problems. Regulatory problems with government, like uh, perhaps you know that recently, in the most recent times, we had problems in the in the uh, land protected area in the Philippines. No, so you cannot do a project. So you have to know when, when to accept, when to re uh, politely deny a project. <laughs> okay. Yes, I saw. Uh, Miss uh, Lina Sira Aaron, uh, Miss Aburi uh, Salvador, uh, Miss Era Era, Mr. Clayton, and someone else. Any uh, one would like to contribute anything? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, have a, I have a question for uh, the doctor. Dr. Ong, you mentioned yeah. 2,000 uh, Philippine students are going to be taking the examination. Is that correct? Yes, uh, starting uh, from the beginning, yes, you should take the examination. But uh, from the Department of Trade and Industry, which used to be handling the uh, licensing regular licensing of all real estate uh, brokers, appraisers, consultants, we have now been transferred to another agency of government, and that is the Professional Regulation Commission. Commission. Uh, and particularly, we now become professionals you know? <laughs> from from a skill then we become professionals. So more stricter licensure examination are done for the three categories: broker, appraiser, consultant. I, I know I know from the United States uh, figures on large examinations of hundreds of people, uh, the figures of uh, passing and and uh, how many are in the business. I wonder if I could ask you in the Philippines over the years, what is the percentage of people that take the exam that uh, pass it? And what is the percentage of people, if you know, that are still in the business after six months? Okay. So uh, thank you, Clayton, for the information of the group. For eight years, I was the chief regulator of the real estate practice, service practice in the Philippines. In my capacity as chairman of the professional regulatory board of real estate wherein, I was the one in charge of licensing all real estate practitioners in the Philippines. To my uh, recollection, because I retired in 2018 and I went full time to my uh, to my to my crop to my work as a real estate consultant broker and appraiser i a lot from 2010 up to 2018 for 8 years we had and an, we had in the licensure examination we had 8000 wow. or 10000 who took the examination and about 50% passed the examination or about 5000 all in all today, for brokers, no, we have in the whole Philippines 32,000 brokers and about 11,000 appraisers and about 600 consultants. Why 600 consultants only? Because you have to have 10 years of experience as a broker and five years as an appraiser because before you can take the licensure examination. Now that the bachelor's degree in real estate management has been implemented, well, we see a little bit decline of the those who would want to take the licensure examination. Why? Because they have to undergo a study. Eh? They have to undergo bachelor's degree uh, work, you know, uh, study so that after graduation, they are, they are allowed to take the licensure exam. During my time, 
there was no, for eight years, there was no uh, graduate of BS Real Estate Management yet. So what did I do, Clayton? I Because I cannot derail the development of the real estate industry in the Philippines. So what I did was I allowed, in the absence of a bachelor's degree in real estate, I allowed those who have graduated first degree, you may be an engineer, an architect, even a nurse or a doctor or a, 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 an environmental planner or any college degree is allowed to take the licensure exam provided you take a 120 hours which I impose of real estate seminars for you to be acquainted on the rudiments of real estate. But that is now gone. In lieu, there is now a bachelor's degree in real estate management approved by the uh, Commission on Higher Education in the Philippines. So now, Thank you. You, you see, Clayton, very, uh, those who are taking the examinations have, have a bit declined. Why? Because they have to study. Before, they only have to attend seminars, but now they have to study, go back to college. I see. Thank you very much. Yes. Any other comments or uh, questions or something? From the, uh, Mr. Steve from uh, New Zealand. And some other, any question or any contribution? Uh, you are welcome to say so. Are there any? Okay. So, uh, um, before we end, maybe before we end, uh, no, nothing. Okay. Uh, uh, President Harry, you know, maybe you say some last words or something <coughs> before we pass to uh, Professor Ong to say something for concluding remarks. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Thank you for this arrangement. Uh, we have learned, I've learned much from the point of view of doctor and even yourself. We not as property consultants, we not only have the various skills, but the feasibility study is extremely important because at the end of the day, if the study is not done well, then the client may not uh, get the results they want. Right? So we need higher skills and therefore we need continuous learning uh, besides the people's skill. Back to you. Thank you, sir. And I like to have a question. Uh, say, um, uh, since you have done a lot of uh, sales, uh, I think you yourself are uh, in the uh, <coughs> like a, a, a not a big um, com company, but I heard that Orange Tree, Orange Tree or something, maybe have uh, so many uh, uh, brokers in the, in Singapore. So say maybe twenty thousand brokers in Singapore, maybe more than half belong to or seventy percent. 70 uh, belong to one organization. How this happened, maybe you can kindly explain uh, to us a bit. All right. In Singapore, a small country, we have 36,000 agents. Wow. 36,000. Now it's increased. Wow. And Promax has about 12,000. ERA, 9,000. Hartons have 5,000 agents. RET has 3,000. And SRI. So you can see 12 plus 9 plus 5, more than... I would say 70% are controlled by the big companies, uh, the five, six companies. Yeah? 12 huh. plus 9 plus 5, 25, you know. Well, yeah, the huge percentage is held by the big companies. The rest are all small, small uh, boutique uh, real estate consultants. Uh. I see. Now, that's Singapore, you know. How, 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 can, how, how can this happen? Uh, and oh. when did it happen? You know, in some countries, there is a ratio one person can have only 20, but our, in Singapore, is open for all. It is highly regulated, but the numbers and control is not regulated. So, Promex has 12,000 agents. ERA has 9,000. My company has 3,000 real estate agents. 3,000. And I have a group of agents. Yeah. So, yeah. this is very unique in Singapore. Um, I see. I see. Very interesting indeed. Uh, uh, Dr. Mark, Ong, uh, uh, Mark, any last words? Do you allow foreigners to practice real estate in Singapore? Uh, For example, I am a uh, Filipino. 
I have yes. a client in Singapore, as you can see, there are a lot of Filipinos. There are about 300,000 Filipinos in Singapore. Do you allow us to practice? <clears throat> uh, my government does not allow. I allow. Uh, but my, <laughs> my government doesn't allow. Anyone who practices as property agents must first be registered with the Council for Estate Agencies. Anyone who is not registered practicing as an agent on conviction shall face a fine of up to $25,000 oh or 12 God. months imprisonment or both. So cannot. <laughs> it's a close profession for Singaporeans only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you can, as a Filipino broker, can connect with an estate agent in Singapore to do what we call referral. Can, can. We can, we can do co-brokerage. -bro co I, I can work with you and share the commission. We call it co-brokerage. It's allowed. Allowed. It is allowed. Uh, I said we, we, we can we can we can co-broker. You know. Okay. 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 So we have to uh, twenty five thousand for the fine if we practice uh, malpractice in Singapore <laughs> yeah. and also twelve months of uh, uh, imprisonment <laughs> and also hitting as well. Hit yeah. Also hit. <laughs> no hit. No 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 weeping. <laughs> 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 I see. Okay, uh, Dr. Sabon, my last comment. Yes, please. I would like to congratulate you <laughs> for initiating this kind of webinar as president of the Council of Experts mm -hmm. of PIABC Ward. You are really an expert. Oh, no, you are. You, you, are. <laughs> you would want to, to cascade. You would want to let other people know to get information on what people like you and Harry have been or have learned in their so many years of practice in real estate. So me, as you know, that I have just been elected as president of the Education and Academic Members Committee of PIAPSI Ward, would probably follow your footsteps. <laughs> and do oh, a you, webinar again on the same issue in academic, not only in uh, real estate uh, consultancy, but in all facets, in all phases of real estate, wherein education and uh, training and development are really a must for all of the PIABC board membership. Thank you Thank and you. congratulations to you, Dr. Support. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. May, so, may I ask uh, a question? Yes, please. Uh, Dr. Ong, I'm glad you brought it up. I, I guess we're talking to the right man. I, I understand that FIABSI is in the process of creating uh, some courses for designations. Is that correct? Yes, 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 yes. You know, we, uh, well, I, I am, I'm going to assume my position in June. That's it. Uh, me, and me. We, are, we are open for some kind of discussion, just like what, I don't know if some people are members of the NAR here. In NAR, they have a lot of designations. And perhaps in PIAPC, we can plan and hopefully create a uh, designation that people might attend. But probably there is one that was not, uh, that has not been inactive for so long. And that is the PIREC. Do you remember, Dr. Stephon? Yes, PIREC? sir. Yeah. The PIREC. We organized once uh, in Bangkok. Uh, 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 the PIREC. Because I... In Singapore, I, also I'm twice. I'm one of the, of the very few. I think we're only three PIREC uh, members. PIREC uh -huh. designate here in the uh -huh. Philippines. And I would like to propagate as president of the, of the education um, and academic members uh, committee to perhaps just like the other organizations go around the globe, with perhaps with Dr. Sopon, Mr. Clayton, and of course, Harry, to really uh, propagate the wisdom of education and, and real estate in the whole world. And that's what the UPC world is all about. Yeah. We have to educate people. We have to educate practitioners, so to speak. No, Harry? Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, uh, this will be our new progress when our Dr. Ong is uh, uh, assumed in his uh, position in June, as he said. Okay. So, now we may have to, uh, in our session now, it is uh, 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 5 to 10 uh, in Bangkok already. It is 6 to 10. It is the dinner time for Dr. Ong and also 
President <laughs> Harry Yo. Hindi na kasi holiday here in Manila. It's a Muslim holiday in the Philippines. I see. <laughs> holiday in Manila na. No work, okay. but the heat of the sun, uh, Mr. Clayton, the heat of the sun is terrible, up to 44 degrees. My God. Oh my God. I oh, cannot hot get out. Indeed. Yeah, it's very hot here too. Ah, yeah, in, in Bangkok, it's very hot too, right? Yep. Yeah. Now, Singapore, you still have the same weather, yeah. Harry? Oh, no, uh, we, are, we are slightly lower because we are surrounded by water. So uh, we, it's only 30 plus. It's not that hot. It's hot, but not as hot as Philippines. Eh? Uh, oh, well, we really are experiencing so yeah. much. Many are getting sick. All right. So and I'm now in Phuket. Uh, uh, in Phuket, also really I hot now. In, uh, Phuket and Panga. Yes. So really hot now. Okay. So thank you very much. God bless you. All the best to you uh, for uh, our two speakers and also our participants. See you next time. Bye bye. Take bye bye. Care. Yeah, thank you bye. all. Bye bye. bye. And yeah, also see, yeah. our thank Filipino you. participants, uh, Aubrey, and the other Filipino participants, they are here. No? Yeah. Yeah. Aubrey. Yeah. Aubrey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great presentation, guys. Great presentation. Dr. Sopon's uh, yes. webinar every yes. month. <laughs> yeah. uh, every month. Sure. Thank you very much. Goodbye.